Should and will Michigan include the LGBT community as a protected class under the state constitution? Been a number of stops and starts over the last three years to get that done, both in the state legislature as well as by a ballot initiative, but it's gone nowhere. Tonight, a renewed call for action. Mara McDonald following that for us from downtown. Uh, Donald Trump's victory is what's really spurring this, I guess, Mara. Devin, it sure is. Even though Trump says he has no interest in overturning marriage equality, gay rights activists here say they don't think anything good is coming their way. Michigan was at the forefront of the gay marriage fight, which ultimately succeeded at the Supreme Court. Two Hazel Park nurses wanted to be able to adopt each other's children. Their attorney, Dana Nessel, sees nothing but trouble ahead for that Supreme Court decision that allowed them to get married. Now that Republicans control the presidency, the House, and the Senate, which means the GOP controls the Supreme Court. And we have to be expecting that we're going to see some terrible decisions handed down. And the only way we can prevent this from happening is to pass a constitutional amendment protecting LGBT people. Nestle tried to put a bipartisan coalition together this last election cycle to get an LGBT civil rights ordinance on the ballot and got pushback in the gay community. Many thought it wasn't the right time. She thinks had it been on the ballot, Trump may not have flipped Michigan. I think it would have inspired a lot of people to come out and vote that didn't vote at all. Um, particularly people in the millennial generation. Remember, the Michigan legislature tackled adding protections for gays, and it would have passed had it just been gays. Transgendered people were the sticking point that made the whole thing blow up at the legislative level. Nessel sees no way forward legislatively here in Michigan, so she's pushing a ballot proposal for the 2018 election year. What else are we going to do? Just sit and wait? and hope that our rights aren't stripped away, and then we wake up one morning and all of a sudden they're just gone. Back here live, realize that undertaking a ballot initiative is not simple. It is incredibly time intensive and it is money intensive. Not to mention you need more than 300,000 signatures to even get on the ballot at this point. So Dana Nessel has a long road ahead of her over the next two years. We are live downtown. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4.